and to behold your majesty in every little thing. And may we be in lacy leaves and every budding flower, the hand that rolls the universe with gentleness and power. And may this Easter grant you that spring lavishly imparts awakened faded flowers of faith lying dormant in our hearts. And give us ears to hear, dear God, the springtime song of birds with messages more meaningful than man, the man's often empty words. Selling care men being who are lost in dark despair, be like us and do not worry, for God has you in his care. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you have done marvelous things. We, when we are walking in darkness, you are there when we are kneeling in weakness. You are there when we draw near feeling worthless. You are there when we are needing forgiveness. You are there when we are searching for your grace. You are there. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you have done marvelous things. Amen. Please stand and sing him number three. It means we have a new beginning, a fresh start, 
And boy, do I ever need a fresh start. It means Jesus. It means something very strange. It means something very wonderful. It means someone too good. It means something too good to be true. It means re resurrection. It means he lives. He lives. I live. It means what? That sounds more like an English class and conjugation of verbs. Well, it's sort of like that. Do you get the point? He lived. He lives. I live. Hmm. He lived. He lives. I live. Yeah, I think I see what you mean. He did live. He really did live. That, that's definitely the fact we start with. Listen to this. Remember his holy birth? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar, Augustus, that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first moment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, which each to his own city, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his behold, who was with child, and while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her first son, and wrapped him in swollen cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. Remember his boyhood? After three days they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. Remember his baptism? The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare the way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, making his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, preaching, uh, preaching of baptism and repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And there went out to him out of the country of Judea, and all people of Jerusalem, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, and had a leather girt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who, will be my, who is mightier than I, and thongs of those sandals I am not ready to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And it was the voice from the heavens, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. Remember the forty days in the wilderness? The Spirit immediately drove him out of the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered to him. That must have been tough, really tough. Remember his early ministry? And he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every infirmity along the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and brought him all, all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Remember the sadness of those who could not listen? And when he drew near to it and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that even today you knew the things that make of, make for peace? But now they are hid from your eyes. For the day shall come upon you when, you're, when your enemies will cast a bank about you and surround you, and hem you in on every side, and dash you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time
Eliab utters visitation. Remember his righteous anger? And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, and we have made it a den of robbers. Remember the last supper? And when it came the hour, and when the hour came, he sat at the table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. And before I tell you that for now on I shall not drink of the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to them, saying, This is my body. Just think of everything that must have been on his mind at that supper. Remember what they did to him the next day? Now, the men who were holding Jesus mocked him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and asked him prophecy, Who is it that struck you? Um, and they spoke many other words against him, reviling him. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there was crucified, they crucified him and the criminals on the right and on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. Now from the sixth hour, there was a darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? How terribly lonely he must have been at that moment. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land. <coughs> While the sun's light failed, and the, curtains of the, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathes his last breath. He lived all right. He really lived, but he died. 2,000 years ago, he lived, and 2,000 years ago, he died. Yes, but don't forget the second part. Remember, he lived way back then. But the wildly wonderful news is that he lives now, today. He, he lives, he really actually does live. Right here, this morning, remember how it happened? But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone were away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood in it, dazzling in apparel. And as they were frightened, and both their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of a sinful man and be crucified, and on the third day rise, and they remembered his words. He rose from the dead. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, and when they say, saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth, he, had, he has been given to him. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, Baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and, and to I am with you always to the close of the age. Remember his return to his Father? Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifted up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. He really does live. Remember how others carried his word to all people? Now, I would remind you, brethren, in all the terms I preach to you, the gospel which you receive, and which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold it fast, unless you believe it vain. For I deliver to you the first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, and according to with the scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. <coughs> then he appeared to James.
Christ, then to all the apostles, last of all, to, as to one and only born, he appeared also to me. He was raised by God from death itself. That's the really important thing. Jesus actually died, was really dead and buried. He did not raise himself. He was not just asleep or in a coma. It was not like a tree which dies in the fall and comes back to life in spring. He was dead. It was God who put life into Jesus' dead body, and absolutely dead body was resurrected and was alive again. Now that's something to talk about. I'd say that's something to shout about. Most people think of death as the most awful thing of all. I mean, death is the end of everything. <coughs> Yes, that's right, or that used to be right. That's what's so fantastic about what happened the Easter day in Jerusalem. You mean death no longer was the end? That's right. God came right out and said, death is no longer death. God said, I'm the absolute control of everything, even death. When the perishable is put in the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in the victory. O oh, death, where is thy victory? O oh, death, where is that thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory throughout the Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, and always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that that Lord be your labor and is not in vain. Well, I guess that brings us to your last part of your theological conjugation. He lived, he lives, I live. How does all of this about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection relate to me? Why is it that I can say, because Jesus lived and lives, I live? Remember the words of the Bible? Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient to for ourselves claim anything as coming from us. Our sufficient, sufficiency is from God, who has qualified us to be ministers of the new covenant, not in a written code, but in the spirit, for the written code kills, but the spirit gives life. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. He is a spirit that gives life. The flesh is a man. No, I do. The words that I have spoken to you are the spirit, are spirit and life. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we, ne we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He can, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know whence it comes or whither it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. For the law of the Spirit of life is Jesus Christ, who has sent who has set me free from the law of sin and death. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are dead because of the sin, your spirits are alive because of the righteousness. If the spirit of him is raised, Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raises Jesus from the dead will give you in your mortal bodies also through the spirit which dwells in you. There's the Jesus being raised from the dead will settle a lot of things, but to me, the part I like best, far in the way, the very best, is the same God that breathed new life into Jesus' lifeless body will do the same thing for life into Jesus. Life into
into Jesus. No. <laughs> Me and you and everyone. You mean if I die like Jesus, God can raise my dead body? Well, yes, but right now he can and he will take my dead lifeless body and bring it back to life. Real exciting life. The life that he will see in Jesus. The life that is open and loving and the real, real, really loving life. Easter has more meaning than I ever dreamed of. Imagine you lived. He lives, and therefore I live. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who rise, raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit which dwells in you. So what does Easter mean? It means I live. It means I live. It means I live. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, join us in singing Glorious Day, which can be found in your bowl.
is not for identification for all the world to see. It is simply an understanding between my Savior and me. When I put my hand in my pocket to bring out a coin or a key, the cross is there to remind me of the price he paid for me. It reminds me too to be thankful for my blessing for my blessings day by day and to strive to serve him better in all that I do and say. It's also a daily reminder of the peace and comfort I share with all who know my master and give themselves to his care. So I carry it across my pocket, reminding no one but me that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. It's only I live for me. Jesus loves me so much that he would bleed and die. He took upon his beaten back the cross that saw him crucified. Yes, he loved us all so much that he was scorned and scuffed. He took it all upon himself, for it was the will of God. God knew it was the only way to find sacrifice. Jesus Christ, a sinless man, would need to give his life. And even in the Gift he gave, we still have not yet known the fullness of his mighty love, that the grace he freely shown. All he asks is that if we all repent and follow him, for he was has made the way for us free from hurt and sin. Yes, Jesus loved us all so much, and yes, he loves us still. He longs for us to trust in him. And do the Father's will. Please join us in singing hymn <coughs> number 368, Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 